spends my second decade in this company, 21 years, very third deck of the arena, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm a football player. Why the heck am I going to do this financial services thing? I'm not even good at math. I wasn't the best student. I don't have a college degree. I see all these people that are smart and sharp and PhD and professional backgrounds. I said, how can a guy like me do a business like this? And I see all these amazing speakers and all these amazing people. But after 30, 40, 50 speakers, I saw a couple speakers. I don't know if you guys can relate. I saw a couple speakers and I was like, that guy's doing what? <laughs> that lady's making how much money? Right? Because I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit competitive. I played sports my whole life. I know what it feels like to win. I know what it feels like to lose. And I'd much rather win. And so I saw these people up here, 80 years old, talking about competition and things like that. I'm like, man, I don't know if he knows who he's talking to. But here's the deal. But I saw all these people speaking on stage, and I was like, man, if that guy can do it, I should be able to figure this thing out. If that lady can do it, I should be able to figure this thing out. Anybody else feel that same way? Like, man. And uh, hopefully you feel that way with me maybe today as well, because like, like Brian mentioned, I, I started, I was working at the San Jose airport in a little toll booth, and I was doing that for about four years, making my little $15 an hour, and after four years in the toll booth, I said a little prayer. I said, God, I know you did not put me in this world just to, just to be at this airport, just to be in this toll booth the rest of my life. I know that I was supposed to do big things in my life. And uh, did it, has anybody ever felt that way? Like I'm supposed to do something great. I'm supposed to do something big. And uh, I felt that way. And then I got introduced to this amazing company. And I came in and I struggled a little bit. You know, my first 14 months, I only made $8,000. I failed my licenses a bunch of different times. No college degree, super young. Parents didn't have any money, didn't know what I was doing. But all I know is there's no strength without struggle. Because eventually, once you're successful, you enjoy the journey, you trust the process, and as long as you don't quit, you know, my wife and I, we have a rule that we don't say the D word. You know, the D word is divorce. Because if you are 100% committed to your business, no matter what, you're not gonna quit, guess what, eventually you're gonna make it. And that's how our marriage is with Sandra and I, that's how we feel about our kids, that's how we feel about our business, we're 100% all in. And so if you don't quit, eventually you're gonna make it. It might take you a little bit longer, it might be a little bit of a struggle like it was for me, but as long as you keep with this thing, eventually you're gonna be a success story. You know, when I uh, came to this business, they said, you have to do affirmations. And I said, what? What is an affirmation? I have no idea what that means. They said, you gotta throw it out there like a boomerang and start talking big. And I was making about $30,000 a year at the time, so I said, all right, I'm gonna make $100,000 in a year. And everyone started laughing. They're like, no one in your whole family makes $100,000 a year. And I just threw it out there, boom. We started making $100,000 a year. I said, man, if this works for $100,000 a year, I need to start thinking bigger. Because I know I serve a big God, and I, I serve a big God. And, and so I start throwing affirmations like my, my favorite Bible verse. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. So I threw it out there, boom. And all of a sudden I said, all right. We're gonna make a million dollars a year. And I threw it out there and everyone's like, stop exaggerating. Stop putting it out there, that's an exaggeration. I go, hey, it's not an exaggeration, that's just my affirmation. And I put it out there and then I developed a, a business philosophy. And it was if I help others get to where they wanna go, I'll get to where I wanna go. And that's been my focus. And I didn't care how old someone was, how young someone was, what nationality, what you know, side of the tracks they come from, what background, what degrees. That's what we love about this company. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter where you've been. All that matters is where you're going. And so I'm so proud of our pinnacle organization because we have such a diverse team. We're like the United Nations. WFG. We don't care where you've been. All that matters is where you're going. I'm so blessed that a guy like me got a start in this company. Because I've been blessed, I want to be a blessing to others and help others do the exact same thing. So, 
You know, there's three things in this company that you need if you want to be successful. Three things. Number one, you need, you need a mission. You know, luckily, WFG, we have a mission called what? No Family Left Behind. Can we say that together real quick? No, no Family Left Behind. Behind. Isn't that awesome? I love that other financial companies are just focused on the top 5% and we're focused on the other 95%. Doesn't that make you feel good? Because you know what? Uh, a, a guy like me, where I come from, they probably would have left my family behind. But I'm glad WFG never left our family behind. So we already have a mission statement here in this company. And then the system. You know, we have a business format system. You guys are all a part of great teams. Your leader has a system for you in your business. You know, system stands for save yourself time, energy, and money. So you gotta run the system. So your team has a great system, run that system. But we're gonna need one thing from you. WFG provides the mission, your team, your leaders provide the system, but we're gonna need one thing from you. And that one thing from you is the vision. What is your vision? You know, a lot of our organization, we talk about helping our community. We gotta help our community. I don't know if anybody played sports here, but my whole life I played sports and I coached sports. And so my community was the athlete community and the coaches community, and that was my community. But we talk about helping our community. So what is your vision? I have a huge, huge vision for our organization to be the number one team in financial services history. And I know that's a big vision, but guess what? Don't believe me, just watch. And so you've got to have a vision. You've got to throw it out there. And so if this business is so good, how come some people don't do well? Well, there's three reasons why people wouldn't do well in this business. Number one is distractions. You know, God doesn't have to defeat you. The adversary doesn't have to defeat you. All they gotta do is distract you. And you know what I know about some people? They get distracted way too easy. You know, my wife and I, we tell our kids, it's not hocus pocus, it's focus. You gotta focus on one thing. And what is right. focus? Follow one course until successful. So do not get distracted. This business is way too good for you to be messing around, doing all these different things. You ever meet people and they go, hey man, I'm doing real estate on the side, I'm doing mortgages, I'm doing credit repair, I'm selling tamales on the weekend, I do makeup, I do this, I sell vitamins, I got these protein shakes. They're doing 10 different things at once. You know why? Because they're not good at any of them. If you just got good at one thing, like this business, that's all you would need to do. You wouldn't have to do 10 different things, just do one thing and go all in. So don't get distracted. That's why some people don't make it. Number one. Number two is complacency. You know, I'm doing pretty good. I remember when I started making a million dollars a year in my 20s, they're like, man, compared to the toll booth at the airport, you're doing pretty good. I go, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, but compared to what? Who do you compare yourself against? Do you compare yourself against the best or do you compare yourself against the rest? And so I've always compared myself against the best, so I know that there's a long way to go. I just turned 40 years old. This little million dollar a month thing, I'm just getting started. Just so you know. And, uh, and by the way, that exaggeration that people thought, they didn't know it was my affirmation. I threw it out like a boomerang. Million a year in my 20s, done. Million a year in my 30s, million a month in my 30s, done. Right? And then I was like, a million in a cycle. And that's what we just did a couple weeks ago. A million in a cycle. And the only reason I tell you that is that is your future. You should be walking around MGM Grand with sunglasses on because your future's so bright. If a, if a guy like me from the wrong side of the tracks, 21 years old, no college degree, no experience in the business, I was shy and I was introverted, but guess what? If they tell me they're going to pay me a million a year, a million a month, or a million a cycle, I'm going to figure out how to talk to some people. Right. There's only an introvert until they find their passion. There's only two most important days in your life, the day you were born and the day you figure out why. I know that I was born to do something great in my life, but I know you were as well. So do not be complacent. Do not be complacent. And the third reason why people don't make it here is what? Number one is distractions, number two is complacency, and number three is failure. What is fail? First attempt in learning. 
You gotta fail forward. No one is good at this business when they first started. I became a pretty good football player, but I was terrible when I started football. I became pretty good at this business. I'm just getting started, but guess what? I was pretty bad at this business when I first started. When I was 21 years old, I had no clue about how to do this. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yeah. A setback is a good time for a comeback. Yeah. It's not how many times you get knocked down, all that matters is how many times you get back up. So yes, you're gonna have some failure, yes, you're gonna have some failure, but your failure is God testing you to see how bad you want your goals and dreams. So guess what? I wanna challenge you, I wanna challenge your thinking a little bit. Failure is just a stepping stone on my way to success. And I wanna close with this. You're gonna be out of here in a couple days, you're gonna be fired up, you're gonna be excited, and what happens if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden someone comes, a bad person, they try to steal your purse, they try to steal your wallet. You wouldn't allow that to happen. Heck no, don't steal my wallet. Don't steal my purse. Heck no. So guess what? The same thing applies when someone tries to steal your dreams. Because 100% you're going to come out of here, someone's going to try to steal your dream, someone's going to try to steal your big God-sized dreams, just like you wouldn't let someone steal your wallet, just like you wouldn't let someone steal your purse. Do not let anybody steal your dream. Because your dream 